we're the first case to be argued at any federal court of appeals in the country. And this particular circuit court usually makes its decisions fairly quickly. So that means we'll probably be the first case to get a, an opinion. And from there, it's on to the United States Supreme Court. So while this is not the last step in the road, it is a huge step. And we're looking forward to the arguments. Are you looking forward to kind of the tag team match with you and Ken Cuccinelli? I'm certainly looking forward to arguing. Our, our case goes first, and then uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia goes after that. So we're looking forward to that dialogue and that give and take to see how it goes during the arguments. And ultimately, of course, it's what the judges write, uh, not tomorrow, uh, but after the uh, decision has actually been given. Have you guys worked with the state at all, or is your arguments completely different? Our arguments are very similar in the sense that we argue that the Constitution does not give authority to pass the individual mandate, but we have additional arguments as well. We also argue the employer mandate, which the Commonwealth of Virginia does not raise, and we raise additional constitutional claims. But the real crux of this is whether Congress, the federal government, has the authority to force every single American to purchase a health insurance product of the government's own choosing and definition under penalty of law. That's really unprecedented, and if we cross that threshold, then Congress has the ability to force every single American to do anything, whether it's grow food or buy food or have a certain kind of motor vehicle transportation. Literally, the power of government has become unlimited if this particular law is upheld as constitutional. That's why we believe that ultimately, at the end of the day, at the United States Supreme Court, this law will be struck down and found to be unconstitutional. Good. So tomorrow is just kind of jumping through the hoops a little bit to get there. Well, I wouldn't consider tomorrow just jumping through the hoops. This is a huge step in the direction, but we all know that this is not the final step. Usually, the Federal Court of Appeals could clearly be the final step in the road, but since this case is of such magnificent importance, and it covers so many new areas, and it's novel in scope, no matter which way the court rules, whether it strikes down the law or upholds the law, I think the ultimate destination is the United States Supreme Court. So that's a very unique situation that this case presents that most arguments at the Court of Appeals do not. Most cases stop at the Federal Court of Appeals. This case, I think, will go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. How long do you get to speak? Total of uh, 20 minutes each side. So we have 40 minutes for the first case and 40 minutes for the second case. Now, it's not a lot of time, but there's a lot of questions that can take place in that time period. And, of course, a lot of this has been done through the briefs. We've already submitted a, an extensive brief, and there's been a lot of interest and a lot of amicus briefs have been submitted as well. So two different cases. I mean, what are the two? Uh, the two different cases, it's Liberty University versus Geithner, which I'll argue first, and then after that, it's the Commonwealth of Virginia versus Sebelius. Uh, this commonality between those two cases is that we both challenge the individual mandate, saying that it's beyond the authority of Congress to pass that mandate. But Liberty University's case, that I'll argue, also challenges the employer mandate, and also adds additional constitutional arguments as to why this law is unconstitutional.